You're listening to the Voices Behind Women's Cricket Chat. That's Hannah, Georgie, Cassie, Mahika and Alex. Coming up on today's podcast, we've got Western Storm and Oval Invincibles winner, Sophia Smale. We talked to Sophia about her recent call-up to the Under-19s for the Under-19 World Cup, making her debut, what what it means to have the support of her grandfather, who, by the way, if you don't know, he was on TMS at Laws when she played the Invincibles against London Spirit. Hello and welcome to this episode of Women's Cricket Chat. We are absolutely delighted today to be joined by Sophia Smale, less than 24 hours after it was announced that she will be playing for England in the inaugural Under-19 World Cup in South Africa in January. This is mega exciting news, not only the tournament, but that Sophia joins us today. So you've got me, Georgie and Alex and Sophia... Welcome to the podcast. Most enormous, massive congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Thank you. Have you come down off cloud nine yet? Um, yeah, eventually. It took um, a few weeks after the hundred. But yeah, I'm back into the swing of things with school. And yeah, just it's better now. I'm driving now. So I'm able to just drive to school on my own. It's sort of just, just less stressful. But yeah, I am back, back down to work. And so when did you find out that you would be playing and what did it feel like to hear that you would be playing for England in the first ever Under-19 World Cup? Um, We found out quite a few weeks ago, actually. It was quite a long time. We had to wait for it to be publicly announced. Um, Yeah, it was special. I think ever since, well, ever since I've been little, I've always dreamed of playing for England, but obviously this is Under-19s and I was obviously dreaming for the main, the main team. But I think when... When it when it got announced that there was gonna be an under nineteen World Cup and it was the the age it would be I think it was last year it was supposed to be in Bangladesh I think um and I think when I knew that I would be in the age category to go I think I it was a dream that I always had um and for the past few years I've sort of just been breaking it down and trying to get in in that that was the main goal for the past few years so yeah to achieve it is pretty special. And we have to sort of think of like the Southwest in that area. You join a whole host of names that have come from that part of the country, like with Josh Butler, Heather Knight, the Overton twins, all have represented England in some format or one way or another. So you're joining a whole host of great players and hopefully you will be another one to add to that list. Yeah, hopefully. Obviously, hopefully I can build on and 19s and work my way up to making my senior debut and obviously that's the main goal but yeah I'm really excited to go out there and I think just to put the jersey on with the three lions is pretty special I think if um I think when the anthem plays I'll probably get I won't feel real but I'll probably get a bit emotional and it's one of those moments when you're like don't say queen don't say queen I know well when we had to do it for um the storm games i kept on saying queen which was uh, so was- yeah it was it was better than queen so i just i realized and was able to adapt so if we just look at your year as a whole i mean when i was 17 i was pretty pleased if i woke up without a spot but this year for you you made your debut for the senior storm side you were then late call up to the 100 and you were Joint wicket taker for the hundred. Alyssa Healy was casually your first wicket, and now you've been announced in this squad. Can you sum up this year for us? <laughs> um, I, I don't know. It's just incredible, I guess. I never thought my first year of well, I I dreamed of it, but I never thought my first year would be this good. Um, yeah, I'm very lucky. I still can't get over how well I've done and in the hundred I still don't think I'll ever realise what what happened and and how it went so well. But yeah, I mean it's incredible. I think when I look back on it, just I just sort of have to just take a deep breath and just go, wow, like that that happened over the summer. The summer went by so quickly as well. It was it was hard to sort of like slow down and really appreciate what I'd achieved. So like it is quite nice now that I can just look back at it and be like, oh, wow, that was a whirlwind. And I mean, in your first year, 
on the professional circuit, you've had a few, a fairly few like good captains. You know, you've got Sophie Laugh at Western Storm. You've got is it was it Susie Bates at the hundred. So you know, what is it like to be captained by those people, and what have they taught you so far, and what have you learned from them? Yeah, I think ma- massively. Uh, Luffy at Storm just knows the game inside out, and I try to get as much out for as I could, and especially when you know we talk about analysis so I would always go up to her and try and try and get some advice on on fields and stuff but I think with in the hundred I, I learned the, the most in the hundred um whether it was just off the pitch or on the pitch but I think yeah being around the likes of um Danny and Cappy and Susie and Shabs Laws people like that were they they know so much about the game and um, I think I just try to just get, get myself involved, be around them as much as I can and, and try and get a lot out of them. And, and yeah, they were great. They were great people to have in the team. They were amazing people, just lovely on and off the pitch. But I think tactically, they're some of the best people you could ask for in a team. And, you know, I am very lucky with a very good captain regionally as well, with Luffy. I think one of the highlights from the summer to do with you was when the BBC got your grandfather on to TMS and that was just such a hot one where we loved it. I think everyone loved it. And it was just so nice to see that he was bursting with pride. Of course he would be, but like just to kind of get that feeling of having such such a supportive family, because we know with cricket sometimes that isn't always the case. Yeah. Um well as soon as I started picking up a cricket back grandpa started coaching me and yeah he's always helped me throughout the years and you know critiqued me to be super technical and everything but yeah I think he's just come on the journey with me so I think to see me do well in 100 was yeah it was pretty special for him and especially at Lords he loves Lords so he was so happy to be there and it was nice that he could come I wasn't sure if he would be able to come or not so I'm very lucky and yeah with the with the under 19s I remember telling him and he was so happy that I just have three free lines on on my shirt he always said he want he wanted me to play for England and um I think the reality of like a senior cap happening is probably not going to happen I don't know how how many years away that is but I don't know if grandpa will be able to to see it so I think for him to be able to see me at under 19s is really special. And how did he react when you told him? Yeah, it was just, yeah, can't actually really remember. I just, I think I just remember he was really happy that I would, I was going to be playing, playing with three lines on my shirt. I was going to be playing for England because as I said, he'd always said he wanted me, he always wanted to see me play for England, but obviously he sort of knew that, you know, that happens when you're a bit older now. So, you know, I'm not going to be 17 and been playing for England women. So I think the fact that he, he knows that in January he's going to be watching me play for England is super special. And will he be coming out to South Africa? No, I'm afraid not. No, so he'll be watching from home. At least the time difference isn't too bad. Yeah, yeah, he'll be watching, definitely. But no, it's, it's too far for him to come. I think it will mainly just be mum... My mum and my dad are planning on going out there, but no, no, no one else in my family, I don't think. So basically your family playing, you've got your best friend playing, and that is... <laughs> so if we throw it way back to when it all started. So you made your debut for Newport, age seven, and then yeah, you gave around a year after that. I mean, you were so young. Can you remember back to that and what it was like? Yeah. Get I remember how big first... your pads must have been. I was tiny and really just so small. I had nothing on me. Um, and I remember my first game, I was, I think I was six or seven. I might have been six. And basically, I had a cricket match down at a local club called, I think it was Monkswood. Newport. I don't know. I think it was a girls game, actually. And we, we were running late because we forgot. And it was on my dad's birthday. Um, we forgot and I ran in and bowled left arm seam and got a hat trick. 
was my first game. <laughs> okay, just throw that one in casually. We forgot it was happening. We were late and I walked in and got a hat trick. Um, <laughs> and then, yeah, I think I made, I think I was eight or nine when I played. I think I was eight and got my cap when I was age nine for Wales. So I was about eight and, and under 12 teams. I was always really little. And then I think I started captaining that team when I was 10. So I was, yeah, I was always somewhat younger than everyone else. And I read somewhere, so if this is wrong, you can play on the Western Storm website, but I read that you also play hockey as well. So has that helped you in any way with your cricket in terms of your batting or is it just, you know, a sport where there's transferable skills between the two? Um, I mean, it probably has helped me. Um, I don't know. I don't know if it's helped me, but yeah, I do play hockey still. Um, yeah, I try and play at a decent level now, but it's slowly gone a little bit more, like less of a higher level. Um, I haven't played, I haven't been to a Welsh camp since February, but um, yeah, I played for my club on the weekend, which is like a national league. So it's pretty, pretty good standard. Um, and yeah, played then. I mean, you've got a pretty good sort of sporting crossovers in this squad as a whole. Like Josie Groves is part of the England Roses Academy in netball as well. And then you've played hockey for Wales. Do you want to just yeah. give some of the talent to us oldies? <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot of people across the lights. Um, Ree McDonald Gay plays England hockey. I think Saren Smale because I used to play Saren in tennis. We used to play. <laughs> she was better than me, sadly. Um, but she, she was like a counter tennis player. Um, she stopped a little bit older than me. I stopped when I was a bit younger. But yeah, there are a few quite talented people. Yeah. And so looking at this squad as a whole, obviously there's lots of people you've seen, you've played against and maybe with before, the likes of Saren. What's it like to be back playing on the same side now? What's it going to be like instead of playing against these other Storm v Thunder? Yeah, good. Yeah. Um, I haven't played with Saren since I was... I don't know if she left in under 15s or if it was under 13s. I think it was under 13s. So I haven't played with her for a while. But yeah, it's just good to, to be back playing with her. Like We we were really good friends when we were younger and, and we've always kept in touch and whenever we see each other we play each other you know we always have a laugh and a joke and I always seem to spend more time with her when I play against her than my actual team because we're always digging at each other especially when we're on the pitch but it will be nice to go out there and, and take the field with her but um, yeah it's nice to to play with people that I've played with before played against obviously I'm lucky that I've played with quite a few of them so yeah just I think it's a great group of girls and I'm really excited to just go out there and hopefully bring it home. And it must also be nice to have your Western Storm teammate Neve Holland with you because like Georgie alluded to and with the way the past couple of years have been with COVID bubbles and stuff like that, it's got to be nice to be able to travel with people that you know and you can just, you know, after training, go for it, go for a meal or go for a coffee and it it's not so what's the word it's not so awkward and it's not so compact so to speak yeah it's nice to have someone else from the region but yeah it's just important to mix with mix with everyone I I guess and um I think you know hopefully that you know, that will that won't you know that those sort of where people hang out with you know the same people won't happen I think everyone will be mixing with everyone and yeah just hope it's a good group dynamic and we go out there and we play for each other and yeah, I guess. But it's it is nice to, you know, have another person at Storm and obviously it's it's good for the Storm that two people and two people in the under nineteen so is a good achievement for, for the Storm and I think they're very happy that they've they've got two in the team. And you're used to playing, you know, alongside different people. You've had people in the hundred from all over the world, but you have also played in boys teams growing up. So you were the first girl to represent Monmouth School for Boys. Do you think that sort of uh, gave you that bit of hardiness, you know, being the only girl and being able to prove yourself at those kind of levels? I think I had that because I grew up with an older brother. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I had always played boys cricket from a young age. I 
played for Newport when I was nine. I didn't really play for the girls' team that much when I was little. I just played for the boys. Um, at this, When you were younger, yeah, it wasn't great. I didn't really enjoy it that much. I used to play county for the boys, and sometimes it was a bit, oh, don't enjoy it. But I love playing for school with the boys. Like, it's just good fun. And I'm very lucky. They're very respectful. And even in like men's cricket, I haven't played for ages now for men's cricket, but I loved it. Um, and I just think you I think you're pushing yourself more in boys cricket I think it's it's something that's vital um I think I wouldn't be where I am if I didn't play boys cricket simple as that if I just played girls cricket I don't think it would have stretched me and pushed me um you know if you can face someone who's bobbling I don't know 70 mile an hour and swinging it both ways then you should be okay when you go down to to women's cricket which is 60 mile an hour you should be able to you know be at your own um and and with you know boys as well obviously they try and whack you out the park and stuff so you do get wickets occasionally just because they or they just block you out because they don't want to get out to you but no I think it just challenges you obviously it's a very high standard my school cricket so I mean a lot of the boys in my school are academy county cricketers so I think like training with them and playing against other schools is it's just stretches me way more and yeah I've, I've always loved it and yeah I get on with them really well we actually former podcast guest Danny Wyatt who was another one of your early wickets in the 100 this year said the same thing she was like I would tell every girl to play boys cricket yeah. when they start because there's just something different about it do you find that sort of in the 100 as well you know all these people bringing different stuff from all over the world and obviously a lot of players you'll have never seen or played against before yeah I think Danny's really right right I would always encourage young girls to play whether you know they feel uncomfortable about playing in boys cricket or not unfortunately I think that's the reality you've got to get out there and you've got to get in the teams if you're good enough to be in it obviously you know if you're good enough to be in a boys team get in there and and just get stuck in and I always when I was younger I used to not really like if I didn't want to even want to mix with them, I just focus on my own game anyway and I just think it's better in myself. But I think in the hundred with with different people, yeah, I think obviously you you play cricket and with so many people over the years. Um, it's hard to sort of, you know, remember everyone and all that. But I yeah, I think just definitely there's just so many people. I think you just have to try and learn as much as you can from especially in the 100 from so many different people because they know so much about the game. Everyone that was in the 100 was knowledgeable. Um, but yeah, I think it's, it is important to definitely play boys cricket. And you mentioned how important the 100 is. You were obviously at Oval Invincibles this year um, and there was a lot of talk last year about Alice Capsi being the young breakthrough. And this year you were at the same side as her. And, there, you know, I have heard rumours you being referred to as the 2022 Alice Capsi. And what does it feel to be that person who is you know the one that's broken through this year that we is now in everyone's awareness crazy I, I guess I didn't even expect to get in to the hundred um and then when I did I thought I'd just be running the drinks on on the side and then yeah I played and some somehow I did well and it's just crazy um I don't know it it feels unreal when I think about it but yeah I think the hundred for me was so important. Just I think yeah, it's getting yourself out there, isn't it? But I think just pushing it's about pushing yourself, you know, and I talk about that with boys cricket, but when you you're being pushed against, you know, bowling against Healy, Divine, you know, Pete Perry, people like that. And there's nothing better than than that and that, you know, to be able to have played the, the highest standard of English cricket in this um this year was incredible and yeah I'm very lucky I think without that I wouldn't be as knowledgeable as I am today and yeah I think I'm very lucky that JV gave me the opportunity. And obviously you were at Over London's Balls like we've already mentioned and you did get to play alongside Alice Capsi. Did you get to pick her brain at all and I know earlier you said you know an England women's call-up might not be on the cards just yet but Alice Capsi is also 17 and Freya Kemp and they've made their first team debut. So surely you must think yours can't be too far away. Well, I'm not sure about that. I've got Sophie Eccleston, who's a left dancer, and he's the best in the world. So 
um, I think I'm, unless I get in with her, I'm, I'm not sure how I'm going to be getting in. But um, yeah, maybe, maybe, maybe in a few years time. I don't think it's going to happen in the near future. Not, not that I can see at the moment. But yeah, um, yeah, I tried to, I, I did spend quite a bit of time with Cats. Um, she's just so determined, I think. You just see how much she wants it. Like she'd be in the gym every day and, and she'd, she's very independent. You know, she'd walk over there and she, she'd be in there first. And she'd be, you know, she was really sort of just always pushing herself. Um, and I, I did pick her brains a bit, like with how busy she was and how she managed school and stuff like that. With, like her attendance last year was just like ridiculous. She was just never in school. <laughs> Um, but yeah, she was a nightmare spoiling in the next two. It was just, just annoying. I, I would, I think she, she went to reverse sweep one once and I saw, I saw her, like, saw her do it and I bought it down the leg side and she's just got hold of it and whacked me over Point's head. And I was like, oh. I was like, oh my God. But yeah, she was, she was incredible to have in the team. And yeah, I tried, I did try to pick her brains as much as I can. And yeah, she's just so talented. And so now we're coming off, you know, it's the end of the cricket season's over. And for you now, the focus is the Under-19 World Cup. What is the plan between now and then? Obviously, the squad's been announced. We've got a few months. So what happens next? Um, just tra- It's just training camps now every, I think it's nearly every weekend. I'm not sure if it is. I don't think it's every weekend, but it, it literally is nearly every weekend now up until December, probably just before Christmas and then. Yeah, I think we leave on the 3rd of January and then we're off. It's very soon. It's very sudden. So there won't be any big New Year's Eve parties this year? No, no, there won't be. But I don't really like, I'm not really um a fan of that anyway. I think a friend does have a New Year's party, but I won't be going anyway because I like to spend New Year's with my family. So Yeah, and um, yeah. how do you find sort of trying to balance cricket and school and being 17 and all the things that come with that all at the same time um the the this there are sacrifices um the social life is sacrifice um i think try and try and focus on cricket is the first well actually i should say school first but it is obviously cricket in my head um so yeah cricket and school and then social when i can if i go and pop and see a friend it's easier now that I can drive because I've only just passed my test like a week ago that was a pain because mum and dad couldn't always take me to see a friend or something so I can drive now and it'll be easier but yeah social life's like parties and stuff it it's not it's a one-off I think I went to one about three weeks ago and I think they were like well why is she here because they just didn't expect me to be here because I'm just never there and to be fair like sometimes they'll, they'll invite me and say you know you probably won't be there so and I was like no I won't be there <laughs> um but I'm it's um I guess that's that's what it is if you want to make it there are some things that you do have to sacrifice whether that's you know going out and partying it's not really my thing anyway so I'm quite happy to just sit at home and watch tv but um yeah I do occasionally have a social life I do have a social life in school but um, like occasionally I will go out and do something with my friends or go to a party but it's not it's not very often it's just very busy school and hockey and cricket it's and then you have to fit in gym and running and everything it's just like a lot like when I saw you just after you won the 100 you were like I'm just on the search for some lemonade and I was like, I can't yeah. imagine that's really the first thing anyone put out when they were like, oh, what do we get out for the winners? Some lemonade. And you were like, I just want to find some lemonade. <laughs> yeah, well, I could have been on the best, but it was just beer and cider. It's not really my um, preferred option of drink, if I'm being honest. I don't really drink much alcohol anyway, but that was a no-no. So I was just, just trying to find some lemonade. And then I went up to the box and then I found some. I think one thing I wanted to know is something that we always ask our guests is just simply growing up, did you have any role models, any female role models? And if so, who were they? Um, 
my so I had m- m- main two and then I had one one to all as I got older my main two Serena Williams and Elise Perry were my main two Serena Williams I was a tennis big tennis player when I was young loved it um was yeah I was, back in the day I was a county tennis player I wasn't that good um my brother was also better ever need a doubles partner hit me up <laughs> I haven't I played last um in the summer actually for school and I was terrible I was oh my god this is so embarrassing I like hyped myself up I was like yeah I used to be quite good when I was little and I went out and I was like oh my god terrible um but I am starting back with mum because mum wants to play tennis so I'm gonna pop to the tennis club with her on the weekend I think and go and go and have a hit because I haven't got a hockey match this week thank god um and yeah I loved her just was such a fan I think she just had that tenacity the want the drive um I think she just had that edge and I always mum always said like you won't make it if you're not driven you know mum was always you know very like much like you know, you've got to want it. So if you've got to put the work in, and I think when I used to watch New Orleans, you'd see how much she wanted. And then I, you know, she was just the queen, wasn't she? She's well, she still is a queen. But yeah, I just loved her. And um, and then Elise Perry was I loved watching her back. Just um, she was just technically correct, and I knew Grandpa would approve. And although I wasn't a seam bowler. Like she was just really athletic like, in the field. She, she was just a gun and you know, just well when I had well I bowled against her in the hundred, I was like, Oh my god, what's going on? Like that was the biggest like starstruck moment was when I bowled at Elise Perry, I was like, Oh my gosh, what's going on? And um yeah, I loved her and also she played Australia football. So I was like, Oh, well I can play my hockey too and so I like liked that she balanced two sports. Um so they were my main two. And then I had obviously Sophie Eccleston when she burst onto the scene when she was young um, for my bowling, which was my main one. And I got to meet her when I was 14 in a, a club, I think it was a club Lady Taverners event in the finals. And she was handing the medals out. And yeah, she spoke to me and I was like, oh my God. Um, I think she's, I think she says, oh, are you really knocking on the door of my place soon or something I spoke to her about it actually when when we played um when we played original she came up and spoke to me and um we were talking about it she remembered I think but yeah so that was really nice but yeah I was it was amazing this was to play and bowl at you know Perry and Eccleston was pretty special but yeah they were my main three and someone like Serena Williams I'm so with you on that she's absolutely just like yeah, you maybe you'll be you're, 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 oh, it's the whole story, and then just like, like she, she, yeah, she, she, she used to like go down the park. Like she didn't have, she didn't, she wasn't able to, you know, she it was incredible. Like she didn't have any facilities, and she would go down the local park and and play tennis. And now she's, you know, yeah, she's, she's been through a lot and overcome a lot. Yeah. What would you say has been the hardest stuff you've had to overcome to get to where you are now, and hopefully progress into that full England side in the future? Um, I would say I've been lucky when touching wood anyway. I haven't really had to overcome any injuries or anything like that. I would say, like, I wouldn't really say school. I've managed to sort of balance it. I think sort of just, you know, the idea that they, it is like the social life, I guess. You you can't be, you know, when you have sport and me every day of your life, you know, you can't go out and get hung over or you know, go to a party or just anything like that that's not acceptable because you've got to play the next day and and then you know I know myself I'm so hard on myself if I think well it's because I was out until two last night and I get if I bowl badly or I, I bat badly I'll be like well that, it's my fault so I'm very I'm very disciplined on that side that I know that oh I'm not going to go to that or I'm not going to go and see my friends today. I need to do my work. Or I, I need to, I'm going to play cricket or this or that. Um, I think that's the main one. I think people people don't realise how much you sacrifice to to make it. And, you know, no one, no one even you know, my close family, don't know how much you want deep inside. Um, so it's it's down to you. And um, as someone, I think it was um, the social media lady, actually, she came around everyone at um, Invincible. She was like, what's your, like, 
if you could say one thing to anyone like a inspirational quote thing what would you say and I always always say to people you know when you're older you don't want to look back and think I wasted my talent like I wasted what I had you know I, I didn't make it or I just threw it away and you know because you're not just letting yourself down you're letting everyone down that's been there along the way so I think yeah you just have to there are sacrifices you have to make I mean like I've had to you know sort of slow down on the hockey side that was hard some of my best friends are from hockey but you know if you if you want to make it in something I'm afraid there are some things that you're gonna have to say actually I can't do that or I you know so I think it's it's sort of that side mainly but then on the flip side of it what would you say is the like biggest thing that makes that all worth it doing well doing badly to rubbish (laughs) um but no when when you when yeah when you um I guess just the medals, the achievements, the shirts, the caps, everything you get, and all that, all the photos. Love photos. I'm a big photo collector. I actually have my little Instax book that I keep with me. I have a little album, and it's just got like loads of memories of you know cricket and stuff. And I think the the friends you make as well. I've got my best friends are, are from sport, whether that's cricket, hockey. Um, you know, you, you build friends friendships for life. Um, you know there are there are hard times and you know there's times when you'll get two ducks in a row or something and you'll want the ground to swallow you up but I think when it when it when it goes well um, yeah it's the best thing ever and you know after that the hundred you know I couldn't I couldn't go to sleep that night it was just incredible like those are the moments you know you you dream of don't you so I'm, I'm very lucky you know to to one play the sport I play but also to obviously you know play professionally and make a living out of it it's quite a fun little one this but obviously you are only 17 and so when you were playing in the 100 this year am I right that your mum would have had to have been part of all the whatsapp groups yes unfortunately well in a way it was quite good because you know, I never missed anything but yeah everything still has to go through her before I can't email anyone directly it has to be mum and what was that like? Did she ever drop any like? She's quite good. She she's literally my PA, like because everything goes through her, and like she's always on the you know the WhatsApps, and so she sort of did everything. I didn't really have to do that much. But now that I'm getting more and more independent, it's like oh, I need to do these myself. But yeah, and it also meant that I couldn't leave the hotel on my own. Yeah, and I had to message the safeguarding lady every time I did go out and who I was with, where I was going, what time I'd be back. So yeah, there was, there was you know, I think my mum quite liked the fact that I couldn't go out on my own in London because she was like, I'm, she's quite protective. And so she knew I drive to school and every day I have to bring her saying, I am there safely, I have made her life. So I think she quite liked the fact that I had to go out with someone, she quite liked that. But I mean, yeah, there was, there was some some ups and downs with it like being stuck in your hotel room some days were not fun but you know I guess that was just unfortunately part of the plan next year it won't won't be the same and it won't be like that for South Africa well hey I turned 18 before South Africa so I'm more free in a way obviously you made your debut for Western Storm this year I want us to know like how you felt when you got the call and who actually called you up because some people have like the captain do it some people have like some big wig involved so I'm curious to know um who gave you the news that you were gonna make your debut for Storm so I thought I was gonna be making my debut the week before on the I think it's Sapphire Gardens and I brought my whole family there (laughs) and I didn't fortunately so that was so I was like oh and then it was a weekday we were playing in Chelmsford and I knew that um, two of two of us been as as a teachers, so I was like, oh, they might not be able to play. And I think one of them or two of both of them weren't available, so I thought, oh, come on, surely. And then yeah, I didn't go on the team bus. I went straight from school to Brentwood. Um, Dad dropped me off at the door, and I think yeah, it was Dan because Dan was the the co- head coach at the time. He just called me out and said, oh, are you playing, Soph? And that that was it. Yeah. And how did it feel to step out there for that first game? Oh, yeah, it was fine, actually. That wasn't, yeah, it wasn't too too nerve-wracking. I think the batting was terrifying. 
And obviously this has only come about in the last few years, you know, the Rachel Hayhoe Flint and the Charlotte Edwards Cup. And I mean, I guess for you, it's since being at this kind of level, it has always been an option now because it's been two two years now, coming up to it'll be the third. So how important is it that it's there? Because for you, it is such an option and then you can see that pathway through, but it wasn't there in the past. And so for you, what kind of impact does this have on your game and your future, do you think? Yeah, I think it's really important. Obviously, you can see, especially with the under-19s, how how many of them are actually in that regional teams, you know, the amount of development that's coming through. And it also means that people then can step into, in, you know, international cricket with, without a big leap. So it just platforms, it's just a platform um, to feed into the mm-hmm. international thing. And I think, you know, we're, we're building on building on our our system and I think it's it's working really well I think we've seen a lot of people push through from regional cricket into a into international cricket you know I still think there should be a longer format competition but you know I would like to see that introduced um I don't think I just don't think it's you know we're doing more tests how can we have a test team when we our regional cricket don't play longer format so I would like to see that because also I'd love to play it so yeah I think it's definitely really working and I think the T I quite like that you know with T20 50 over you know we get a bit of both worlds and, and then we have the 100 I think the structure is really good at the moment um yeah I think it's a really good platform for people to step into international cricket I think one game that kind of sticks out for me in particular involving you was in the Charlottesville Cup and um, it was Western Storm versus Southeast Stars and I believe you almost bowled the Storm to victory but it was just like the first time I I didn't really know much about you and then you literally bowled so well to end up on the losing side but I think that was oh yeah I know I know what you're on about now yeah yeah it was at Bristol it was on TV. It was on Sky. It was the Sky game. Yes. Yeah. I thought I thought we'd won that to be honest, but yeah, that that was. I think that was a that was a turning point. I think that's when I think I obviously it was on TV, so I had a little bit more publicity from it. But I think that's when yeah I, I did really well, and I think that's when I sort of my name sort of grew. I think. Talk about delivering on the big stage though as well because you're not only delivering at Bristol, you're delivering on Sky, on the TV, which can be quite nerve-wracking for some people. We've seen it in the men's game with the likes of Simon Kerrigan get the yips, play one test match for England never to be seen again, whereas you you kind of relish that opportunity and then, you know, got that call out to the 100, to the over and now you're absolutely flying. Yeah, I think you've, you can't, you can't uh, think about that it's on TV. I think... I don't really tend to think about it anyway. You're so, especially in the hundred, it goes so quickly. You're so engrossed in the game that you don't, you forget that there's millions of people watching it or thousands. If it's, if it's regional, it's more likely to be thousands. But I think, yeah, you don't see, you, I think at the start, like that that game at Southeast Starts, I did know it was on TV. So I was probably a little bit more on edge. But yeah, as, as you go through the hundred, the hundred, it went so quickly the games you didn't even have time to think I remember the first game it went so fast I literally had a headache I, it was just so quick and it just flew by and I can't really remember that game that well because it was it just went by too quickly and you know that I think that's what the hundred is you've got to somehow slow the game down I think that's when I actually bowled my best I think i bowled really well at um Old Trafford because I just slowed my bowling down I think it's very easy yeah for people to worry about being on TV and obviously the hundreds so quick to to get caught up in it but I think you just got to focus on the game and sort of slow slow everything down and so we're looking ahead that's the kind of mentality you're taking into the under 19 stuff with you but what aside from you know getting all the kit and singing god save the queen and all that what are you most looking forward to um yeah the experience i well i haven't 
I've been to Desert Springs with Storm at the start of this year, but it's a, it's a proper tour um, with, you know, your own age group with, you know, some people that I do know quite well and hopefully I can form friendships, you know, for life. It's, it's about, it's about just, I think more of the social, I think you've got to go out there and have a blast. And when you have a blast, you have you know, a great time. That's when you know, the team will put in a win, winning performances in, I think. So, yeah, just going out there and enjoying and trying to relish every second like I did in 100. Just enjoy it, um, take everything in and just learn from the experience. And, yeah, it's going to be so fun. Like, I I already talked to some of the girls and they're literally like, this is mad, this is incredible, like, what's going on? And they're like, get me on that plane to South Africa already. I think we're, yeah, we're buzzing to be going. It's like, it's insane. And then I guess also the idea of like all the youngsters from all over the world as well, getting to face them. That's just going to be, yeah. Yeah. Like, well, I know why we don't even know anyone from anywhere else. I I don't know any sort of under 90s, even from like Australia. So, so yeah, it's going to be weird. But yeah, well, we, I know we must... to play for the UAE, if that helps. Um, yeah, maybe. There you go. If we play the UAE, I don't know. Well, our group is Rwanda. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, I know one of them as well. Zimbabwe. Yeah. I think it's Zimbabwe. So yeah. But then whoever we play it, I'm sure there'll be some good players on show. Yeah. Well, I think that sort well. of rounds up the end of our like more serious questions. We like to always finish off with a few more fun ones. So we quite like to kick it off often with what is your favorite item at a traditional cricket tea? Oh my god. Uh I don't I haven't had one in ages. I can't even remember. Um, what do I like? Um, oh, I can't pick. I honestly, can't. You, you found this the hardest question so far. I think I have found this the hardest question. Oh no, I don't know. I genuinely don't know. I I but I will always pile it high, even if I because obviously when I had normal cricket teams, I would I would like it would be like whales under. 11s or something so I'd always be opening the batting even though like I was batting I'd still be there for like an hour eating my food like and I'd, I'd put my pads on like three minutes and just run off but I feel like if there's a good selection of cakes I was I was always up for that but then I do quite like like a cocktail sausage or the cheese and pineapple skewers Bro. yeah Bro, They're nice. really, yeah yeah, I um down at the my cricket club they do really good. This is so unhealthy. I do eat healthy, but um chicken nuggets down at my cricket club they are so good. We used to, we there was a ban on them three a person because there was one girl that used to like take like six. <laughs> yeah, favorite musician. Oh no, I really don't like these. I really don't like these questions. I can't choose. Okay, favorite band ABBA by far. I like old music. Um, this is a this is a controversial one, but I love Michael Jackson. Just the music, right? Not maybe not the person, but you know. Um, and uh, yeah, they're my go-to. I have CDs in my car. They're my go-to two CDs is Abba and Michael Jackson and Queen. Um, and then favorite singer. I really like. This is weird. Um, I like soul. Like um, I really like Billy Ocean. Like you that can have that. that. That's not embarrassing at all. No, yeah, that sort of genre. I have a soul playlist, like with you know, Earth, Wind, and Fire. I love Earth, Wind, and Fire. Like all like, of that sort of genre. That's like the random team DJ ever. Um, last <laughs> Netflix thing you binged or last TV series you went for? I'm watching Derry Girls, but yeah, I'm watching that before. I watched, I binged over the, in the hundred, I binged um, Out of Banks. I was obsessed. I was hooked. Absolutely hooked. Didn't think I'd like it, but yeah, did. Last book you read? Don't we read books? <laughs> um, I, this is a weird one. I do RSA level. So I'm currently reading um, a book on Dietrich Bonhoeffer. You probably don't know who that is. Um, it's about, um, Saving Christians during the Nazi world, uh, World War Two during the Nazis. It's just because I did an A level essay on him. Um, yeah, that's a weird one. And I read, I read, I read a lot of like murder mysteries. So I read one about a Christmas murder. 
I know it wasn't Christmas, but yeah, oh, well, Murder's yeah, I, I bought it. I got it for Christmas, but I still hadn't read it, so I just needed to read it over the summer. But yeah, yeah, fair enough. Favorite place you've played cricket? Oh no, uh, the Oval. It's great that. All right. I should probably say Lords, but yeah. I like to play at the Oval. I liked the atmosphere at the Oval. Yeah. yeah. Favorite wicket you've taken? You know, the big names, or maybe not the big names. Might be getting your brother out in the garden. I did get my brother out in a game once. <laughs> oh, I didn't celebrate it. It was for school. He was playing for the MCC, and he like really tried hard not to get out, and then he got out. Um, but no, I'm not going to say that. I think Elisa Healy. Yeah, that first one got me up, up and running in the 100. Go-to celebration for a wicket. Is it the double fist pump? Is it the send-off? Which one do you go to? It depends on the wicket. If it's bold, it's like a run and a, a finger and maybe then a, a fist pump. If I get a caught and bold, which I weirdly did get quite a lot of in the hundred it's it's the arms out wide like that you've probably seen a photo of it just yeah Yeah, nice for those who are listening to this as a podcast we have just had a demonstration of the arms out wide that one um if there's one thing you could say to your grandpa what would it be (laughs) this is cringy um i don't know i love you you're my best friend. <laughs> Thank you for everything. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, I haven't FaceTimed him today, so I probably should. But yeah, just thank you for everything. But yeah, you're my best friend. But I tend to tell him that every day, so it's oh, not so. really like a, a big deal. But yeah, I don't know why. Well, you can you can sign your England shirt for him next. There you go. <laughs> um, um, well, I imagine you've got the joys of RS. A level. I did do RSA level too. Um, yeah. To go on. I have lot of things to do actually. And enjoy. So we won't keep you any longer. Thank you, Sophia Smale, for joining us. And before we go, could you let our listeners know where they can find you on social media? Yeah. Sophia Smale underscore 12 on Instagram. Smaley 011 Twitter, I think. I'm not sure about that one. But yeah, that I think. You'll find me. You'll find me. On Twitter, it is Sophia Smail. It's just at Sophia Smail. Oh, is it? Oh, I changed it. Oh, I've changed it. Okay. Yeah. Thought that one would be easier to find. Yeah. Sophia Smail. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, Absolutely buzzing for you. Over the moon. It's going to be so good. And I'm really excited to see you go out and do your thing. Now, go get on with those essays and whatever. Try and miss as much school as Katsy did. Um, Very much so. I have TikTok as well. Uh, I might, you know, just be posting some TikToks in South Africa. So smell. So, you know, follow those. I did do some in the the 100, actually. Okay, there you go. Get on TikTok. Uh, Thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Massive thanks to Sophia for coming on and being a guest on the podcast. It's really interesting to hear her thoughts and how she's able to balance everything with school, cricket, hockey, A-levels, you know. It seems to be the way of the world now, being a youngster like like Sophia Smell, like Alice Capsey, like Freya Kemp, starting so young and having to balance everything. But it is something that we've seen happen in the women's game and it does seem to be becoming more and more common so it's really interesting to hear her perspective on how she balances everything and we want to wish her and the rest of the under 19s all the luck in the world for the under 19 world cup next year and to all our listeners if you want to keep up to date with everything that we're doing you can follow us on twitter at w cricket chat on instagram at women's cricket chat and if you want to give us a like on facebook we are women's cricket chat if you'd like to give our personal twitters a follow then it's at hannity1194 at georgie heath 27 at cassie coombs 98 at mihika barshney and i'm at alex jane this has been women's cricket chat tune in next time